Hi, I'm Daniel. Today we will be building a firewood shelter using a small project plan from our local co-op home centre. You can find this and many other do-it-yourself plans from co-op at www.home.crs. First, we'll go to my local co-op home centre to pick up the materials. You can cut the materials at home or a co-op home centre team member can cut the materials for you so that all you have to do is put it together. Okay we're going to start with step one in the assembly instructions. Prepare the site. Blocks should rest on a well-drained, firmly compacted area of your lot. Here I had raked out an area just to make sure that all the high spots and some of the debris is gone. One thing you want to do is make sure that you're leaving enough space from any type of structures that are going to be in the area of your shelter. Here I'm probably going to leave about 8 inches from the fence just for airflow. If you are dealing with some uneven ground, you might want to buy some sand and lay that down ahead of time underneath your blocks. It's going to make this process a lot easier. For this step, you're going to want to start with the highest block. Don't start with the lower block or else you're going to end up having to dig out a lot of soil over here. So I marked the center of the blocks and then I'm using one of the 8 foot 2 by 4s that's included in the assembly kit to help me lay out the length of the shelter. Now that we've finished with step 1, placing the blocks, we're going to move on to step 2, which is the 4 by 6 beam placement. Now just make sure that you revert back to the assembly instructions and check the orientation of the brackets so that you know which brackets are going to be installed flush to the edges of the beams and which brackets are going to be installed to the center of the beams. So now that I have the beams in place, I'm going to mark each beam as the orientation of the brackets, just to make a physical and mental note for myself to make sure that I don't mess it up. Now that I can take them over to my saw horses and lay out the brackets in a more comfortable space. Step three, the post cleat and rafter assembly. Now, like your beams, you're gonna to have to note the orientation of these pieces because they're gonna be different from the outside rafters to the inside one. So step four is to install the frames to the four by six beams. I've already gone ahead and installed the frames to the four by six beams while I was preparing the frames. And this is gonna ease an installation when you go to set up and brace the frames to your blocks. I just put up one of my end pieces and I partially braced it up with one of the eight foot two by fours. You can use an eight foot two by four that is part of the kit just make sure that you don't damage it too much because you're going to need it later for the project. You might notice that I left out the center frame and that's because when I go to install this rear ledger board, I'm going to use it as a brace to install the center frame. That way I don't have to use as many partial bracing and it's like doing two tasks at once. So I'm going to mark center on this 4x4, which is an inch and three quarter on a 4x4 block. And then I'll be able to measure four feet from the edge of this board to here. And then bring my 4x4 to where I need it. So we're on to step five, which is installing the rest of the ledger boards. You're going to want to use the two and a half inch coated screws for this task. I've already installed the first one, so now we're going to go ahead and finish installing the rest of them. Okay, now we're on to step six, 
which is probably the easiest step out of this whole project, is placing the 4x4 blocks. We're now going to install the floor. I've cut myself some 1 inch spacer blocks. That way the boards will be consistently the same distance apart and it'll give you some airflow throughout the shelter. So while we're installing these boards, we want to work our way from the back to the front. That's way you're, that way you're working your way out from the shelter and it'll ensure that your spacing is all correct. Step eight, we're just going to repeat exactly what we did for the floor, but we're going to be putting it up on this second shelf. Step nine, we're going to start installing these hurricane clips. These are going to help aid in holding the last remaining rafters to your shelter. Step 10, we're now going to start installing the fascia. The fascia is the portion that's now going to be finishing off our rafter ends and it's going to be wrapping all the way around the roof. So with this front fascia, Start screwing from one end to the other. Depending on how straight this board is or wherever your rafters are going to end up being, you're going to want to screw each rafter at a time so you can move that board along with the rafters. You'll see what I mean as I install this. So we're now moving to step 11. We're going to start sheathing the roof and then carry on with the shingles after this. So as you can see with this OSB sheathing, there is a rough side and there's a smooth side. So you're going to want the rough side up. That's on there for a good purpose. That's for when people are sheathing roofs, they have a little bit of grip it's for under their soles. And it also has a bit of a grid on it and it can help in fastening the sheathing. Step 12, it's now time to install the back panels. Now you're gonna to wanna to start from the top and work your way down. That way you'll be as tight as you can to the ledger that we installed up there. And we're still gonna be using our one inch blocks just the same way as we used on our bottom and top shelf. So on to step 13. We just finished up the back boards and now we're gonna install the side boards. Now, contrary to the back boards where we started at the top, we're going to start at the bottom this time because they have to line up with the back boards. So as you can see, I have a grid line on the OSB like I had mentioned earlier on in the video. I'm going to use this grid line as my base point on how straight my shingles are going to be across here. I'm going to follow the rafters by following my screw holes that I had while I was doing my sheathing. Now that I have my first row of shingles on, I'm gonna add my second layer. Now the second layer, you can see, 
there's a little bit of a dark area past this line. You're gonna wanna cover that up by at least an inch. And then you're gonna wanna leave this overhang quite a bit here and just line up your tabs so that they're all not lining up with the last one. Now I'm going to cut off the first overhanging shingle. Make sure you're wearing some sort of gloves. I would suggest cut resistant gloves. You take a shingle as a straight edge. Line it up with your last shingle. And this top edge of your second shingle. And then you can use this edge to cut the shingle. And we're done. This took me a day to build and with the help of the instruction plan went smoothly. You can find this plan and more at www.home.crs. Thanks for joining me.